There were not many bright spots for Stan Drayton's Temple Owls in 2023. This proved to be one of the worst teams in the country, yet they still had some pretty solid players, but a lot of that good player production from last season is gone. They're going to be relying on a lot of new guys this season, and overall, it makes for a very interesting and possibly yet another down year in 2024. However, can Temple overcome those expectations and be one of college football surprise sides this upcoming season? You're about to find out what I think here in this video. What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. I want to welcome you to my channel and, of course, welcome you to Prediction Season, which is almost finished, guys. We got six videos left, including this one right here, three today, three tomorrow. J thank you so much for your support this Prediction Season. It is finally coming to its conclusion this weekend, and I couldn't be happier with the results. And if you want to continue to support this channel into the college football season, and you're as big of a college football nerd as I am, you got to hit the subscribe button and you got to ring the bell. It's going to let you know when videos get uploaded so you don't miss an upload. And again, just thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. Please continue to show your support in any way you can, whether that's liking, commenting, sharing, watching this video, watching my other videos, of course, subscribing and ringing the bell or anything I have or have not said to help interact with the channel. It all helps to support it. And I really appreciate what you guys are able to do. This weekend rounds out prediction season. And we're starting the weekend off with a team that doesn't have super high expectations coming into the year. So sort of playing with house money. Got a lot of change. It's Stan Drayton's Temple Owls. How do we do predictions this year? Well, we'll take a deep dive into the team's offense, into the defense. And at the end of the video, we'll go through the Temple football schedule. And we'll give it a game by game preview and prediction. A couple more things before we do start. I got to tell you right over here are going to be the stats the team put up either offensively or defensively from last season. And of course, for your viewing pleasure, right down there below the team's logo, I went ahead and put the team's coaching staff for you. Another season under Stan Drayton, another season of Temple Owl football. Let's dive into it. Okay, let's start by talking about the offense last season, which overall just wasn't that great. Now, you did have a couple of pretty darn good players, uh, players on it, some good guys out of the uh, wide receiver and tight end room, which we're going to mention here in a second. But this offense would not have been as good last season if it was not for the quarterback that they had. That is EJ Warner, the son, obviously, of Kurt Warner, an NFL Hall, Hall of Famer, and one of the best stories the NFL has ever seen. He threw for 3,076 yards, 23 touchdowns, but 12 interceptions on 57% completion percentage last year. He's transferred over to Rice. He's going to look to try to improve that touchdown to interception ratio, get that completion percentage up. But overall, you take a look at EJ Warner, you know you have yourself a really darn good quarterback going over there to the Rice Owls. And Quincy Patterson, who was the primary backup last year that didn't provide that great of quarterback play. I mean, the stat line is not going to blow you away by any stretch of a mile. 184 yards, no touchdowns, three picks, and 41% completion percentage. Uh, he's run out of eligibility and graduated. So, okay, where does that leave your quarterback room here in 2024? A little bit thin, but you still got some guys that are going to be in contention for the starting job, and it's these two guys right here. Firstly, I want to talk about the transfer in Evan Simon. He is coming over from Rutgers, and he's sort of been – okay throughout his career he hasn't been fantastic last year only threw three passes uh two for three for 30 yards and one touchdown but back in 2022 threw for 777 yards on 137 pass attempts completing 79 of them for four touchdowns yet six interceptions so there are a lot of things to work out with emmons with uh evan simon and his development if he does in fact get that starting role here i think he's close and he'll be in contention for it but I don't think he's going to get that starting job. I think that is going to go to a guy by the name of Forrest Brock. He is also that projected starter on rlads.com. I expect him to get the football for the Owls this season. Again, like Simon, he still kind of needs some development. Uh, Brock enters the season as only a junior. So we'll, uh, again, we'll, we'll kind of see what he's made of here. Only threw 15 passes last year for 60 yards, no touchdown, uh, no touchdowns, I should say, and one pick. Again, still kind of a young quarterback uh, hasn't really gotten a whole lot of experience in college so far he's again projected to be that starter we'll see how it all plays out for him but you lose a really good one in EJ Warner it's some pretty big shoes to fill for the Owls but they got two guys there in Forrest Brock and Evan Simons I think no matter what they're gonna get okay to solid quarterback play at least as I think even if Simon starts he'll improve Brock has to improve and obviously he's gonna show us a lot more than what he's shown us prior uh, just based off of reps and he'll get a lot more playing time this year quarterback situation interesting for the Temple Owls this year. Let's look at the talent that is around the quarterback position, starting out with the running back room, and it just was not a good rushing attack last season. 
Uh, I'll pull up some stats here for you. They ran the ball 331 times. So, yes, it was a pass-first offense, but obviously it was going to be when EJ Warner was at quarterback. You might have to rely on the run game a little bit more this season, but Darvin Hubbard and Edward Sadie, your uh, top and third leading rushers from last season, are both gone. Hubbard was the top rusher last year, 83 carries. 412 yards and three touchdowns. You also do lose Sadie, who had 230 yards on 68 carries last season. I do need to mention that Quincy Patterson, even though he wasn't a big factor in that pass game, was a fairly sizable factor in the run game. He ran the ball 41 times for 132 yards, and I know that doesn't sound like much, but he led the team in rushing touchdowns last year with four. That is some pretty good value, so you lose a lot out of that rushing room you do return a couple pieces though and Jokez Hawkez however you pronounce that first name I apologize uh Smith is going to be returning to this room second leading rusher at 235 yards and one touchdown average 4.6 yards per carry which again was slightly behind Hubbard from last season but he could be that starting running back this year EJ Wilson will also be coming back at 13 carries for 58 yards last year but you do bring in a couple of guys through the transfer portal and right there with Smith Antoine Littleton, I believe, is a Maryland transfer. I'll fact check that right now for all of you fine people. But he's projected to be a really good running back here and was fairly solid during his time at Maryland. Yes, that is where he is coming from. So we'll see what kind of role he plays. You also do bring in another transfer that could see some carries here and there, but it is uh, Tyree Washington. He's over from a community college slash JUCO uh, school. And so uh, you could see him get some carries this year. But with Littleton and Smith, at least, you'll see Washington and Wilson here and there this season. The run game I expect to improve for the Owls this season, statistically, just based on the fact that they might have to lean on them a little bit more. We'll dive into the pass uh, room here really quickly because I am rambling on about a lot of things. Okay, you, you get two Huge losses out of the pass catching room. Wide receiver room, your really only notable loss to me is a big one. Ahmad Anderson Jr. was your leading receiver last year. 37 catches, 647 yards, and three touchdowns. You also do lose really good player out of the tight end room. He's off to the NFL. It's David Martin Robinson, 537 yards, four touchdowns last season. You also do lose Jordan Smith, who also had four touchdowns last year, 287 yards. He's graduated out of the tight end room. So pass catching room, who do you have coming back? Well, your second leading rusher among, or your second leading receiver, I should say, among wide receivers, your third overall last season, Dante Wright, also four receiving touchdowns last year. So you had three guys tied for the team lead right there. 507 yards for him last year will be a big part to the wide receiver room. Zay Baines, John Adams, Xavier Irvin, and Ian Stewart are all returners. While you do get Antonio Jones coming in here through the transfer portal, he probably is going to more be a second string guy, but he's coming over from Grambling State, should provide some pretty solid minutes. And then not really any notable transfers coming into the tight end room that I could find. So you get Landon Morris, Reese Clark, and Peter Clark, spelled differently, so no, no relation, all coming back to the tight end room. Offensive line, Richard Rodriguez has gone due to graduation, and Victor Stoffel went ahead and entered the transfer portal. So your offensive line, as well as a portal addition in Grayson Maines, has a lot of returners. Luke Watson, Wisdom uh, Quarshi, hopefully I'm saying that name right, Kevin Terry, Eric King, Diego Barajas, and Chris Smith all return to the offensive line room. Again, to couple uh, with Grayson Maines, who probably is going to be that starting center for you this year, coming in through the portal. There's your Temple offense here in 2024. And again, it's kind of hard to predict what this offense is going to do this season because while the run game might improve statistically, they probably are going to have to do a little bit better in terms of the offensive line run blocking for them and just some of these running backs ripping off some big plays. Yes, they're going to lean on the run game a little bit more. They're going to get more reps this season just because of the fact that EJ Warner is gone and you don't quite know what you have with Brock or Simon yet. Uh, uh, obviously, they haven't played any significant in-game minutes. But once you figure out your quarterback play, you got some good uh, wide receiver pieces. The run game could be pretty solid. Offensive line, how do they step up? How do they play this season? They allowed only 18 sacks last year. So honestly, not too bad there. But they got to be able to protect their quarterback, Brock or Simon. We'll see what this Temple offense is made of here in 2024. You take a look at the defensive side of the ball, and this was the side of the ball that just was not great for Temple last season. Uh, the, the offense definitely kept them in some games, but the defense, for the most part, just wasn't able to close things out. 441 yards per game, 36 points per game, or almost 36 points per game. And it, especially that rush defense, my apologies, especially that rush defense, not great last season, almost 200 rushing yards per game. You knew if the other team uh, that was playing Temple had a pretty decent running back, there was a pretty good shot that he was going to have a pretty good day. But 
all those things set aside, let's take a look at what Temple does have leaving this, de uh, this defensive side in order to understand what they have coming back. Because there are some really good notable returning players here, but you do lose a ton off of the defensive front. Jerquavion Mahone is gone due to graduation. That is a pretty big loss there on this defensive front as uh, Mahone... M Mahoney, you could say that last name both ways, whichever one is correct. I'll take the, the credit for it. But 26 tackles in the sack for him last season, and a ton more guys are gone here due to the transfer portal. Davion Hood, really, really good player uh, that is going to be leaving. 21 tackles in the sack for him last season. Zamir Cobbs and Joseph Apia Darkwa, hopefully I'm saying that name correctly, he has gone off through the portal as well. So your defensive front, what do you have coming back? Well, you do return Tra Thomas, I believe was the leading, yes, was the leading tackler among true defensive linemen last season. Uh, he, he's a defensive edge, uh, as well as his teammate in Dewan Black uh, as well. Both of those guys, three sacks for Thomas, three and a half sacks for Black. So you see both of those guys coming back. You also are getting Alan Hay coming back, as well as Conlon Green and some other players return. But you bring in a lot through the transfer portal. Cameron Stewart, Latrell Jean, uh, Colin Vaughn, and Sekou Chroma. And I realize Colin has three L's. Oh, and he should only have two. So that is fixed up there for you. But you bring in some really good pieces through the portal uh, to help give a boost to what the defensive line lost uh, over this past cycle. Linebacking room, though, I mean, you lose a ton more talent through here. And two guys that were huge impacts on the defense last year, two top three tacklers, both gone off to play on Sundays. Jordan McGee uh, was the leading tackler last year. 80 tackles, also tied for that team lead with three and a half sacks. Again, he was tied with Black, who does return to the team, but you lose your other sack leader when McGee has gone to the NFL. And Yavandi Rigby, even though it wasn't the leading tackler, you could argue the better linebacker here. But overall, I mean, no matter which way you slice it, McGee, Rigby, again, uh, two top three tacklers last season, uh, first and third re respectively, are gone out of this linebacker room, and you lose a ton more talent. Corey Yeoman is gone and off through the transfer portal. 35 tackles, half a sack for him last year, and a couple more guys have graduated. Another top five tackler uh, in Jacob Hollins has graduated. He had 56 uh, tackles, two sacks, and an interception last season, and Leighton Jordan is also gone and off due to graduation as well more of a depth piece. Uh, oh no, never mind. I was looking at the wrong stat line. 24 tackles, two and a half sacks for Leighton Jordan last year. Guys, that's a ton of talent leaving this linebacker room. Going to be up to a lot of guys that were sort of back in that depth room to step up and play some big minutes. Well, you do get a Sim Smith-Marset, DJ uh, Woodbury Sr., uh, and uh, Antoine Santiago coming back here to this team, as well as Eric Stewart, Taekwon King, uh, Tyler uh, Lapolo, and Jalen Lewis all entering through the transfer portal. Now, I do have to mention that I do believe, yes, they sort of have this uh, owl position. Uh, it's basically just an extra linebacker. Uh, I think could play a little bit of defensive back as well. So anyone that's in that position is in this linebacker room. And anyone that plays the jack position, I've listed as a defensive lineman. Let's dive on into the defensive back room real quick, because again, this video is going to be a pretty long one. Uh, Dominic Hill is gone and off through the transfer portal, as well as Jalen McMurray and Diane Hawkins, three very significant corners to this defense from last season. Again, all of them gone and off there through the transfer portal. Hill, 47 tackles, four pass defended. McMurray, 38 tackles, four pass defended. Uh, and then, again, uh, Hawkins, pretty solid player in his own right when he did get time, had double-digit tackles last season. You also lose a huge piece when your second leading tackler, leader in pass defended, and leader in interceptions when uh, Taiwan Francis has graduated. And then, again, a lot more guys got and off through the portal. Alex Odom, Brennan Scott, and Sam Martin Jr., all have entered the portal. So here's a defensive back room in 2024. Elijah Daraville and Ban Oswecki. Hopefully I'm saying that name right. Daraville, very significant player last year to the corner back room. So you get him coming back, which is big. And then Jamel Johnson, Toby Richardson, or sorry, not Toby, Tory Richardson are some names that come in through the transfer portal. Really only notable returner in the safety room with all the talent you lost is Zyel Powell. But you do get Andreas Keaton, uh, Javier, or... Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm going to go with Javier. It's a, if it's wrong, please feel free to correct me in the comment section below. Morton uh, and uh, Louis or Louis Fry that is entering through the portal. And hey, kickers are people too, guys. We got to show them some love. Camden Price has gone due to graduation, primary place kicker from last season. But you do get Dante Atten back to be your punter. And Maddox Trujillo is in through the portal to be that primary place kicker for you this upcoming season. So overall, when you take a look at this defense, guys, it's just a lot of talent to replace. Now, while you did bring in some pretty solid pieces through the portal, it's going to be a lot of sort of leave and 
replaced. And by that, I mean it's just going to be a lot of pieces to replace, a lot of holes to fill in. We'll see how this Temple defense does this year, and they may improve in some facets, but again, they got a lot of shoes to fill in from last season. Let's take a look at the Temple football schedule. We'll run through it here a little bit quicker than usual just because of time slots here. Any game at home is going to be underlined. Well, any game on the road is in italics. Those of you that don't know what that is, it's that slanted text. Any game in green is going to be a game that I think the Temple Owls are going to win pretty easily. Any game in yellow is going to be a close competitive game that, hey, I, I think Temple's going to be able to win still. And any game in red is a loss. You start out with the game that I see as a bona fide loss. It's against the Oklahoma Sooners, a new team to the SEC for, uh, to the SEC ranks this season. And I do believe that Oklahoma is going to be one of the better teams in the nation this year. I think Jackson Arnold is a stud. He's got a lot of good returning wide receivers, as well as Deion Burks coming in through the portal. The defense should get better. Oklahoma, that's going to be a loss for the Temple Owls. I also think they're going to lose to the Navy midshipmen. Navy, yes, they've got to replace some pretty key pieces off of last year's team, and they're going to be changing up their offensive identity a little bit this year. So interesting to see what that looks like for the Navy midshipmen. But overall, this team is still going to be physical defensively and especially with how, uh, well, they're also going to be physical offensively. I just don't know that Temple is going to quite be able to handle the physicality level that Navy is going to bring and another team that's on their schedule. We'll talk about it more here in a little bit, but I think that's going to be a loss there to the Navy midshipmen. And then you get your first home game of the year here in week three. It's against the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Now, I know Coastal Carolina lost a lot last season. Grayson McCall has gone and off through the transfer portal. He is now with the NC State Wolfpack. You lose some really good wide receiver pieces, some really good uh, running back pieces from last season, some really good defensive pieces. But I think Ethan Vasco is going to provide you good quarterback play. Braden Bennett is still back there at running back. You get some good wide receiver uh, pieces coming in. And, hey, even though you lost some good defensive pieces, you still got some good ones coming back. And, again, I've said this before, even though I don't love Tim Beck as a, a head coach, Coastal Carolina is still going to be one of the better sides in Conference USA, or not Conference USA, my apologies, in the Sun Belt Conference this season. Uh, and I do believe that Coastal Carolina is going to be able to beat the Temple Owls here. Temple is going to have a struggling season th this season. I think you can see where this pr prediction video I is going. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of pieces that you have to fill in. But Temple has enough pieces here to where I think they're going to get at least one game. And I think there's no better opportunity to get a win at least early on in the college football season. Yes, maybe that road game against Navy. But I think it's this game here against Utah State. And I think you're going to be able to win it. Utah State's in a lot of turmoil right now. Uh, they got some really talented pieces leaving through the portal. And that was even before everything with Blake Anderson happened. So yes, everything with Blake uh, Anderson happened. No longer the head coach there. Utah State, how do they carry themselves into the college football season? And it could be a struggling year for the Aggies this season as well. Got some good talent there. But overall, again, I think Temple has enough pieces. They're going to be able to put it together once or twice this year. I think this is the game, especially early on in the college football season, where they are most inclined to get that win. And I do think that they go, or I was about to say go on the road, that they stay at home here, second of three straight home games, and they're going to be able to beat the Utah State Aggies. Can they carry that momentum into a weekday performance against the Army Black Knights? Well, like the Navy midshipmen, Army is going to be very physical this season. They are joining the American Athletic Conference officially this year, and I do think this is going to be a loss for the Temple Owls. Really like Army. I think they got a lot of really good talent returning some good offensive and defensive pieces off of last year's team. And again, that physicality level, I think will be too much for this Temple Owls team, both offensively and defensively. Road game against the UConn Huskies. Winnable game here, right? Well, yes, potentially, but I also do think you're going to be losing here to the UConn Huskies. Nick Evers is coming in at quarterback, and while you don't quite know what you get from him, I think he's going to be a pretty solid player. You bring in some extremely, extremely talented wide receiver uh, pieces, TJ Sheffield, Skylar Bell, to pair with some pretty good returners. Defensively, you load up on transfers there as well. UConn's going to push for a bowl game this year. I like him to beat Temple, and you start out 1-5 and five through the first half of the season. And guys, spoiler alert for the Owls, I don't think it gets much better in the second half here. Home game against the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Even though Tulsa, quite literally, year in and year out, is always seemingly one of the most difficult teams in the nation to figure out. They have more talent than Temple. In my opinion, I think they're a better team than Temple, and I think they're going to be able to beat the Temple Owls. Uh, Cardell Williams uh, and Kirk Francis are both there at the quarterback position. They're going to be vying out for that starting job. Kirk Francis may be in a slight edge, but again, wouldn't surprise me to see Cardell Williams win it there either. Got some really good wide receiver pieces coming in, some really good linebacking pieces in through the portal as well. Uh, Tulsa, again, hard team to figure out. 
but to me, it's not hard to figure out that I think they're going to be beating the Temple Owls. You got a couple road games here, and I don't think you're going to fare. Oh, by the way, that Tulsa game is after your first bye week. So, hey, who knows? Maybe they can build some momentum and get that win. But overall, I just don't see it. And then a couple losses coming up here. East Carolina, not a good football team last year. They're going to be much better than they uh, were last year this season, bringing in some really good transfer portal pieces. Uh, and I think they'll beat the Temple Owls. You get your second bye week right here, but you got to go on the, on the road and play Tulane. And look, I know, I know, I know Tulane lost a lot from last year. They also lost their head coach, Willie Fritz, who's going off to Houston. John Sumrall is coming in. Some really good portal pieces coming in there. Heck, Ty Thompson, a former Oregon Duck, really highly recruited player, probably going to be that starting quarterback for him this year to take over for Michael Pratt. He's going to fit in well. Tulane will still be one of the best teams in the American this year, and I think that they will be beating the Temple Owls. I think FAU is going to be much improved from where they were last season, and Tom Herman knows what it takes to get things done at the group of five level. Even though I don't think FAU is going to quite push for an American Athletic Conference title, they will be much better than they were last season. UTSA, yes, even though Frank Harris and Zachary Franklin are both gone, Jeff Trailer knows how to develop some really, really good talent. There's still a ton of really good pieces there with the UTSA Roadrunners, uh, and that is a road game on a Friday. We know teams histori uh, historically struggle with that. That'll be a loss for the Temple Owls. And North Texas, they're revamping a lot of positions, but Chandler Morris is coming in to play quarterback for that team. Of course, he has power four experience with the TCU Horned Frogs, revamping a lot of positions, including the wide receiver room, including some defensive positions. Again, much like Tulsa, hard team to figure out this year, but it's just because, again, North Texas got a lot of transfers coming in. Who knows what we're going to get from them? But overall, I think it's going to be some really good things. So again, Temple, a struggling year for this program. They are able to win one game. But guys, 0-12, I do think is possible here. I just don't think things are going to mesh well for Stan Drayton's group. Uh, losing EJ Warner, really big part to that offense. Losing as much talent as you did and as much as your leaders as you did defensively. I think a lot of those things are really going to hurt this Temple team. And I just got them falling to 1-11 this season. One of the teams that... I just don't think it's going to have a great college football season. Maybe they can prove me wrong if they can build some momentum, uh, win Utah State, uh, beat Army, maybe even go on the road and win UConn, win those three straight. They can build some momentum there in conference play, lead to a better season. I just think they struggle this year. They go 1-11. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Remember to play hard but tailgate harder. And in my next video, we'll talk about the New Mexico Lobos. Goodbye.